Get ready. Happy Monday, everybody, and thanks for taking some time to hang out and play video games with me. This week, we're flying the friendly skies of Afterburner 2 for the Sega 32X. So, is Afterburner 2 a real Top Gun, or is it more jet fuel for the 32X haters out there? I'm unplugging everything in my house so I can turn on my Sega Genesis 32X CD. That's not true. I have a modified GameCube power supply that powers the whole thing, just like everybody else. So let's get ready and play Afterburner 2 for 32X. Hey girls, where's Optimus at? Designed by Yu Suzuki and programmed by Satoshi Mifuni for Sega's X-Board in 1987, Afterburner 2 was Sega's upgrade to the original Afterburner that began its development as a fantasy-style game designed after Studio Ghibli's Castle in the Sky. After a complete barrel roll in terms of art design, Afterburner 2 gave arcade thrill-seekers one of the 1980s most iconic gaming experiences. For a mere quarter, gamers took control of an F-14 Tomcat and took on endless hordes of enemy aircraft with more missiles than any F-14 should logically be able to carry. Following in the wake of Hollywood's love affair with aerial combat, Afterburner took cues from films like Top Gun and Iron Eagle and gave gamers another Sega theme park ride disguised as an arcade machine. The 32X version of Afterburner 2, or Afterburner Complete, follows the Genesis version up with graphics scaling, and sound closer to the arcade version. The Genesis version is a perfectly competent port of the arcade game for a system that lacked built-in hardware scaling, but it is hard to deny that the 32X version looks the part of the arcade game shoved into a cartridge, shoved into a 32-bit upgrade, slammed on top of a sleek Sega Genesis with a ton of wires coming out of it so it looks like it's on life support. It's pretty. The forest and deserts look full with all the arcade sprites left out of the stock Genesis version, the scaling is, is uh, pretty and smooth, and the explosions animate well. This is the arcade version of Afterburner 2. No, really, I, I think it is. The game even has a code to change the press start prompt to insert coin, and an operator screen that allows you to look at the dip switch settings, which I can't figure out how to change, but I would love to give myself more continues. The game was composed by Hiroshi Kawaguchi, and still remains some of my favorite video game music of all time. The tunes sound great, provided you're coming out of the stereo ports of the Model 1. Uh, the bass is there, so are all the classic voice samples you remember from the arcade version. For me, nothing has ever, ever beat the music from the Canyon Run levels of Afterburner 2. Which I hate to die on because it interrupts the great, great music. For those of us who played this in the arcades as kids, nothing will ever replace the Force Feedback Flight Stick on the arcade cabinets along with the lights and the rocking seat and the sit-down cab. The arcade game was an experience. Afterburner plays, uh, plays fine on Sega's stock six-button pad, but it isn't quite the same rush. And like Star Wars Arcade, the button layout can be a finger stretch when you try to throttle your speed to evade a missile or enemy you know, on your tail. The gameplay is still spot on Sega goodness. It's still insanely hard and you'll pull off a barrel roll to avoid one enemy missile only to roll into another enemy missile. You'll accelerate to escape a missile behind you to get shot by a jet in front of you. As, as chill an experience as OutRun is, Afterburner is its design opposite. But for gamers seeking the 25 cent adrenaline hit, Afterburner won't disappoint. It's a roller coaster ride that will end when your jet's demise, but even when you lose, it's still a lot of fun. It's rare that a game that makes me smile like this uh, when I play really badly. When Street Fighter AI stomps me, I get angry. When Afterburner 2 chews me up and spits me out, I'm still in a good mood. I'm just happy like when I get off a roller coaster. So if you have a Genesis 32X CD and enough outlets to power it all, Afterburner 2 should be in your collection. If you consider yourself a Sega collector, I don't see how you never would have played Afterburner. I know there are a lot of critics out there who bag on the 32X a lot, so it's understandable that your only exposure to this Sega Classic might be the Genesis version. 
as decent a port as that Genesis cartridge is, you haven't really played Afterburner 2 until you play the arcade game, and if you don't have access to one of those around, the 32X port is one of three ports that really does the arcade game justice. The other two being the Sega Ages port for the Saturn and the 3DS port by M2. So if you have a Genesis and you have a 32X on top of it and you have widely spread out outlets or a modified GameCube power supply or alternative means of powering it, play Afterburner 2 for Sega 32X. I don't even know who the enemy is you're fighting. I don't even care. They probably have it coming. I mean, look at them. They're shooting at me. I just assume I'm playing as Snake Eyes and they're all Cobra Jets and when I shoot them all down, they all miraculously hit the eject button and parachute safely to the ground so I can shoot them another day. So anyway, I hope you enjoy this video and no matter what your questions are about toys, the universe, everything, remember, the answer is always to have fun and when all else fails, barrel roll. I really do appreciate you spending time with me. If you want to help me do more, please like, subscribe, share on social media stuff, all that good mess so I can grow the channel, take over the world, make enough money to convince Yu Suzuki to make a Robotech game based on Afterburner. You know, important things. Have a good one, everybody.